Hey, Becoming Me. I'm so excited for you to meet my warrior friend, Tony, today. Tony, welcome to Becoming Me. Hey, I'm a warrior friend. I am. I love that name. Yeah, girl. I'm my husband. Yeah, that's so perfect. Man, I'm so excited to have you here. And you guys, I have to tell you, so Tony and I met basically through social media, how I meet all my friends now, but um, I'm at Orange Conference walking through this courtyard and I see Tony and I had one of those like run up to her moments. I was like, girl, we're friends. We're doing your becoming story. And it just was super fun to have that in real life moment outside of social media. Um, But to kick it off, like who is Tony? Oh my God. Oh, wow. Um, okay, so Tony Collier. I'm from Houston, Texas. I always have to say that because of the, the pride. There's a Texas pride in me. Unfortunately, I've been away from Texas for eight years, but it's okay because I still rep it. Same phone number. I tried to keep my license plate, but the people today would put me in jail. So it's fine. Um, I live in Atlanta now. I um, am a host, communicator, and consultant. I am a wife, and I am a mom to a four-year-old strong-willed blessing by the lord she's got a lot of sass in her um and so i've just been momming and traveling and speaking and um doing this really cool project with a company called preemptive love coalition so um that's been pretty cool so i can dive into that a little bit later but that's who i am really goofy kind of crazy little wild i love vulnerability brokenness shame i'm like let's just get out there and be crazy i'm a three on the enneagram I'm a one. Achiever stand up. Oh gosh. <laughs> Perfect. Patty, you? No, no. Um, no, no. Um, but yeah, I'm a three. Thought I was a two for a long time until I realized that I was helping to achieve, not because I had a good heart like the dudes. Just kidding. Um, but yeah, so achiever. I'm a yellow on the temperaments test. Super extroverted. That's my end. That's awesome. I love it. Thanks for sharing those fun facts about you. And mm-hmm. hey, I love what you said about being vulnerable and getting in. So let's just dive in. What's your story? What's made you? Okay. It's crazy, y'all. <laughs> uh, no, but um, I would say there were a few pivotal moments in my life that um, challenged me and shaped me into who I am today. Um, the first moment was uh, in the third grade, my mom had a massive stroke. Mm -hmm. Um, she became paralyzed on her left side and that started a series of really, really hard medical issues. And so in the third grade, uh, my dad, as my dad was working, my mom couldn't work anymore. She was on disability. I pretty much took care of my mom from the third grade all the way up to high school, Mm -hmm. um, from teaching her to walk again, taking her to therapy, um, taking her to doctor's appointments, starting to drive at 12 and getting my hardship license. Um, really everything. And so uh, that was a bit of a traumatic experience in that there's just a bit of my childhood that uh, didn't get robbed, but it got replaced with a responsibility um, that was difficult to manage. But, you know, as my counselor always says, the things that we use to cope as children become the very things that damage us as adults. And so, but we have to cope and we have to keep moving forward and be resilient because they're so resilient. So that was the first uh, moment. Um, my dad came from a really abusive home, um, loving family, but uh, very verbally abusive. And so that kind of matriculated into our family as well. We were a blended family, had three older brothers. When my mom got sick, it kind of split our family up. My older brothers had to go live with their mom. And so there's just major shifts in elementary school. Always an achiever, had a performer's heart. Um, but like I said, unfortunately, my dad um, just was never satisfied, verbally abusive. Um, wanting to just bang, you know, the goodness uh, into existence versus the nurturing, loving, caring way. And so, and then my mom was just not able to nurture and care because she was just so sick. So um, that achiever in me, like definitely rose up. I, you know, while I definitely have some hard times at home, I kept wanting to achieve. And so lots of organizations, lots of competitions, um, I go throughout middle school, I'm in three or four organizations, I'm acting, I'm competitive cheerleading, and I'm just kind of managing my own life. Um, unfortunately, the presence of um, verbal abuse and the validation, the desire for validation from my dad trickled over into my validation with boys. And so mm-hmm. when I was 13, I lost my virginity, got into a really unhealthy relationship with a guy that was four years older than me. Um, he was a senior, I was a freshman, and um, snuck out of the house 
stole the car, lied, did all the crazy teenage things, um, lost a lot of trust from my parents. Uh, we had a really hard relationship in college or in high school because I thought, you know, I've been raising myself this whole time. You guys don't get to tell me what to do. And so it was a really difficult time. I ended up leaving the house at 16. Oh. Um, I graduated high school in three years at 16. Ended up applying for college, putting myself through college, um, worked three jobs, ended up graduating college at 19 in three years as well. And so there's just always this achiever in me. And unfortunately, I was just going to law school and live my best life and do my thing um, because I have that achiever in me. But the validation rose back up, all the insecurities. And I met a guy that I thought I was in love with and literally threw everything away after dating for four months and decided to move from Texas to Georgia with him. Wow. And unsaved, wild, living my best life. I'm like, I'm getting married. I'm an adult, 19, boot. Um, and it was just a hard situation. Mm. So just more trauma, um, lots of verbal abuse again, perpetuating that cycle, some physical abuse, a lot of poverty, um, mm. food stamps, WIC, church financial assistance. But again, there's still that achiever in me. So I got saved, started working for a church in the youth department, ended up getting ordained as a minister, which is crazy. Mm. Um, got supported by the youth pastor, took the youth pastor role. Mm-hmm. Um, he handed it off to me, incredible mentor I'll never uh, forget, gave me all my reps, my start on stage, helped me to be a better communicator as a woman, gave me platform, gave me influence, mm-hmm. ended up starting to speak in schools at FCAs and well, Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Mm-hmm. So just speaking at schools all across Georgia, being a youth pastor to middle schoolers and high schoolers. Um, and then I went from youth ministry to creative ministry. So I became the creative director of this church I was working at. Um, 2,000 members. We had four staff members, which is a little crazy. Um, started doing, so I mean, doing and learning, just like mm-hmm. so. So managed the social media ministry, a group of 12 people that were post posting, photographers, videographers, managed all external marketing, commercials, billboards, flyers, street team, um, managed all internal marketing and communication. So emails, flyers, text mm-hmm. messages, calling posts to all the members of the church, managed all the admins. So phone, wow. email, um, I mean, uh, video announcement team, service programming, creative ideation, campaigns, event logistics, literally did everything in the church and learned so much. We planted a second campus. I rebranded both of the campuses um, and then I got burnt out. Whew. Right? So, um, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> got burnt out in so many ways. Spiritually mm. burnt out, of course. Um, you're working, you know, in the ministry, not on the ministry, not on your heart. When you're doing so much, uh, got burnt out emotionally. I had a marriage that was verbally abusive and mm-hmm. extremely toxic. And then I had a little girl and, you know, couldn't really afford to be a parent. And it was just a hard season. And God started telling me to leave the church, leave, 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 take a break. And he ended up having to really push me out because I had this loyalty thing in me and this comfort. I was in a state with no family. And so I ended up transitioning out of the church. Um, and after trying so hard to fix the marriage and go to counseling and go to a new church and start over, it just became extremely unhealthy and unsafe. And so ended up transitioning out of the marriage and not giving up on faith, but like, I'm totally not working in the ministry anymore. Mm -hmm. And God was like, nah, playa, that's not what you're doing. I ended up going to work for Girl Scouts corporate, but then I met a couple folks over at North Point Ministries, including my husband, Sam. And God put me right back in the ministry, said, I know you're broken. I know that you uh, are hurt, but Mm -hmm. I want to use you anyway. I want to use you for good. I want you to go and tell your story. I want you to be unashamed of where you are so that people can see my goodness and my power, not through your strength, but through mine. Mm -hmm. And so North Point, shout out to Andy Stanley, Andy and Sandra Stanley. It changed my life. I thought that my purpose was over. I thought that Mm -hmm. my work in ministry was over. They gave me platform. They gave me influence. Um, They gave me an opportunity to be authentically who I am and didn't try to change me or put me into a system, but just to show up and be crazy, wild, African-American, Tony. And as soon as I hit that stage, it just, everything just blew up. Mm -hmm. Chick-fil-A and Elevate Live Events and women's stores and conferences and mom mom con and i mean it my life changed 
three years ago, I was on WIC and food stamps and financial assistance. And I wasn't even sure if I'd ever get on another stage again. And now, here I am. Wow. Telling the story of brokenness. Wow. So. That's incredible. Thank you so much for sharing your journey, like who you are, who you're becoming. Um, it's super inspiring. And I know that you have truths that you've learned along the way. So if you were oh. sitting across from another woman, how would you encourage her to become? Oh, man. I have this small little vice with um, being unashamed and with mm. exposing brokenness in a healthy way, of course. Um, I think I would tell women that in a world that says we have to be perfect to be used, God mm. is saying he wants to use us right in the middle of our mess and that he actually does his best work in the middle of brokenness. Mm. Um, I would shout the scripture, second Corinthians chapter 12, verse nine, my grace is sufficient for my power is made perfect in weakness. And our response to that is therefore we get to boast all the more gladly about our weaknesses so that, and here's the formula, Christ's power will rest on us. Mm. Uh, I want to, I want to tell women as we're looking at other influencers and even in our, you know, celebrity Christian celebrity world that I would encourage you to follow and look for people to look up to that aren't <laughs> ministry goals or material goals. But what's really reflective is their undenying, unsolicited, unconditional desire to be in relationship with Jesus mm. and their ability to be honest about who they are in the midst of their brokenness and be completely unashamed so that God's power will rest on them. I would also say go to counseling, like straight mm -hmm. up and down to every single person. Um, with the amount of trauma that I had and starting counseling at 25, I, man, two straight years of straight mm -hmm. up weekly counseling. Uh, EMDR, which is a trauma treatment to reconcile trauma in your brain. Um, went through that, two rounds of that. Went through chronic insecurity treatment, which was um, coupled with a study by Beth Moore. Love her. It's called So Long Insecurity. You've been a bad friend to oh, us. Oh, good. Oh, oh yeah. Freaking amazing. So amazing. Um, but get, get in counseling, man. Like, it has just changed me. When I think about it, my husband says, says this all the time. We go to doctors because they study the human biology. Mm -hmm. We go to fitness trainers because they study the human physiology. We go to church and we listen to pastors because they have studied the Bible. Mm -hmm. counselors have studied people and emotions and mm -hmm. the way that we can be the healthiest version of ourselves mentally and emotionally and even for Christian counselors spiritually. And so why wouldn't we want to walk with someone that can help us process through what is inevitably going to be the hardest moments of our life? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. That's so good. Oh, <laughs> gold dropped right here. Thank you so much just for sharing your story and then encouraging and empowering us to become who God made us to be as well. So if somebody was watching and they're like, hey, I want to continue to follow Tony's story and just connect with her online. Where can they do that? Um, okay, so all social networks is Tony J. Collier, T-O-N-I-J-C-O-L-L-I-E-R. Um, I do have a really, I think it's a really cool brand called Broken Crayon Still Color. It's the concept that I was talking about that. You know, no matter how broken you are, God still wants to use you um, just as a broken crayon can still be used, even though it's broken. Um, and that is getting really exciting. I um, just did a poll for interns. And so um, the vision that I've always had for broken crowns was a collective of women with broken stories, telling their broken story and encouraging other women in their brokenness. And so now I'm going through all these interviews with interns and they're all so magnificent that I feel like I'm just going to bring them all on and uh, start to just, I'm like, just do your thing. You just take, take, take ownership of the brand and do whatever you want to do. But we create devotionals that help you process through brokenness, sadness, all those really yucky emotions. And so that's, those are all housed on brokencrayons.com and it's B-R-K-N crayons.com. And so you can download it all. Everything's free. Um, awesome. You can download it, watch the videos, look at the blogs about brokenness and processing through brokenness. So. That's so cool. And we'll have all those links here in this post. So you guys can connect with Tony really easily. Tony, thank you so much. You're incredible. 
Thank you, girl, for doing this, for Absolutely. highlighting. Just, I don't know. That's amazing. A lot of people are doing it. Some people are doing it well. Some people are not. But it's very honoring, I think, that you would um, leverage your influence to mm-hmm. platform other women. That's really cool. And we need to do that. We need to keep doing that for, hey, for each other. We're all becoming and on this journey together. And I just think it's more fun to learn from each other along the way. So we're on yeah. the same team. We need each other. Exactly. Exactly. Thanks, Tony.